Origen was born in Alexandria around 185 CE. Now the city of Alexandria was famous in the ancient world for two things, for being an educational centre, for it had a library with an excellent collection of books, and also for being vital as a port of trade. The other two things we need to understand for understanding Origen's context is that the church there claimed an apostolic foundation. They believed that their church was founded by the Apostle Mark, the author of the Gospels. There was also a very strong tradition that the Holy Family had stopped in Egypt. The other thing it's useful for us to understand about Origen's background is that the Alexandrian church grew up in a city with a large and vigorous and well-educated Jewish community. Philo of Alexandria was one of those Jews and we know that his work influenced that of Origen. Philo was deeply devoted to the law and tradition and scripture of Judaism and yet he took it as his uh, um, desire to try to understand that tradition and law in the context of the Greek philosophy which he had been educated in in the city of Alexandria. So Alexandria then is a context which has um, a Jewish tradition, a very early Christian tradition, even if it didn't go all the way back to Mark. And it was uh, important both for trade and its intellectual atmosphere. So Origen, we can say, was born at one of the most important hubs of the Roman Empire. Alongside Philo, we also think that Origen's theology was influenced by that of Clement of Alexandria, who lived in the generations before Origen. Like Philo, he was highly educated, but Clement declared himself to be a Christian. A Christian trying to integrate his understanding of the Bible with his interest in Greek philosophy. He was arguing against some people that we know as Gnostics, but he declared himself to be a Christian Gnostic, a Christian for whom the knowledge of God and salvation was of crucial importance. And he also believed that God, through the incarnation, behaved like a teacher towards humankind. So what then do we know of Origen's life? Well, tracing Origen's biography is very difficult. He became a controversial figure and his legacy was fought over by various people. His reputation was something that different people had a stake in for various reasons. However, we can tell a few things about his background and early biography. He was born around 185 CE. He was born into a Christian family and probably was taught Christianity through a basic knowledge of the scriptures as at home, like a lot of Christian children. In their early years, Christianity was probably spread domestically through the teaching of mothers and other female family members. So alongside that education in the Christian scriptures at home, Origen also received um, an education in the Greek tradition through his schooling. When Origen was in his late teens, his father died as a result of the persecution of Septimius Severus. And thereafter, Origen seems to have gone out to earn his living as a teacher. First of all, teaching Greek literature in the secular schools, but increasingly being called on to teach as a catechetical instructor in Christian churches. So catechetical instruction was the basic instruction in Christian religion, which especially new converts would receive prior to their baptism, their catechism. Um, they were known as catechumens. And it seems here that Origen's teaching of the church was first established. As Origen's career possessed, it seems to be the case that his teaching became increasingly in demand. And eventually he gave up teaching the Greek classics to concentrate on his teaching for the Christian church. It seems to be the case that at one stage he was given a, an official role as teaching of catechumens by Demetrius, Bishop of Alexandria. And it was in this time that Origen began to write. He began writing commentaries on various biblical books. And he also began work on what may have been his greatest achievement, an achievement which ironically does not exist for us anymore today. And that's something called the Hexapla. 
Now, hexapto in Greek simply means the sixfold thing. And this was a version of the Bible in six columns. The first column had Hebrew. The next column was a transliteration of the Hebrew into Greek letters. And there followed four Greek translations of the Hebrew. There may not have been a full Greek text um, for the whole of the Hebrew Bible, but he used those four columns because at various crucial points there were variations in the traditional Greek translation, the Septuagint, which Jews had been using in Alexandria for generations. Now this was a mammoth undertaking, as you can imagine, and we think that the Hexapla was never copied, which was the way in which books were published in the ancient world. Origen probably took it with him to Caesarea when he moved later on his, in his career, but it um, never left that school. We can see the evidence of the Hexapla in the way in which Origen discusses different variant translations in his commentaries, but the actual um, huge work itself uh, does no longer exist. It was also in this period that Origen wrote probably his most famous work on first principles. Um, which we'll come back to in a minute. It's the way in which he tries to encapsulate what he sees as the core of Christian theology. However, we also think that in this period, as Origen's fame spread, his relationship with Bishop Demetrius deteriorated. He was beginning to be asked to give lectures in various other places in the empire beyond Alexandria. He'd received patronage from a wealthy Alexandrian called Ambrosius. Ambrosius basically paid for Origen to have um, an in-house publishing company, if you like. Um, Ambrosius paid for various secretaries and copyists who could help Origen record and then copy out for publication his various works. So Origen was becoming a one-man publication industry and lecture giver. And we think this may not have gone down very well with his diocesan bishop. Certainly, um, Origen was ordained not in Alexandria, but in Caesarea in Palestine. And this may be because Demetrius had forbidden him to be ordained in Alexandria. And eventually, Origen left Alexandria to take up um, a position teaching in a school which he founded in Caesarea. Here in Caesarea, he continued to teach, um, to write, and to distribute his works, which now included, alongside his commentaries and other treatises, um, works which were homilies preaching on various books of the Bible. He took in students from across the empire, and we have one letter from a particularly famous student who praised Origen for the detailed and careful attention which he gave to his teaching, which was based on a broadly Socratic model of question and answer, but which tried to probe um, the reading of the scriptures and an understanding of God. In Palestine, finally, Origen got caught up in another wave of persecutions under the Emperor Decius, and he died probably not as a direct um, cause of being killed by the persecution, but possibly because he had been imprisoned. I find it important to understand Origen first and foremost as a teacher. As I've said, the earliest writing that we have about Origen in terms of his biography comes from one of his pupils who praises him for his teaching style and commitment. But I also think understanding Origen as a teacher helps us understand something about his theology. It also helps us to understand, I think, Origen's somewhat negative reputation, according to some critics. Some people see him or saw him at the time as a heretic. And I think the reason why he gained criticism goes back in part to his teaching style. He sought to explain things rather than just to state them. If you look at early generations of theology, perhaps the theology of Justin Martyr, for example, or Irenaeus, most of their effort is based on telling a story or stating some theological truths, which they then extrapolate in greater or lesser detail. Origen is one of the first theologians to in depth explain what he means or what he understands by certain terms to weigh up different
different explanations.